And uh, so over the next five years, my brother actually, he did go down to south, the South Pole in Antarctica and, and was down there in the ridiculous extreme elements and, and went out and filmed Alex. And Alex was able to uh, uh, take that trek. And it actually has become a DVD with, uh, with a participant's guide. And it's really, it's the, it's the catalyst for the story. It's the, hey, this is the beginning, what it looks like to just go ahead and believe. Here's the whole nine yards. Uh, this is Jason's book which is Surrendered and Untamed, a field guide for the vagabond believer. And then you've got the DVD and the study guide. Uh, Awaken your soul at the edge of the world. You want to see what it looks like at the edge of the world? I am so glad we can show you this clip. Watch and listen. You know, the Bible speaks about our lives being nothing more than vapor. That glass of boiling water, that's what our lives are like, vapor. Potential, and only when we cast it to God and His plans can we actually change this world and bring about the kind of place that God wants for us. These, these four 12-minute films, that's what you're getting on the DVD, uh, could turn you into a revolutionary. Okay. Uh, Jason, you write that a revolutionary is crazy enough to obey, willing to fail, but expects to succeed. Yeah. That's how you're living now. Uh, yeah, amen. That's, that's the way we were created to live. I'm convinced of it. And Look at what you're doing now. Tell us. I know. I get to be here with you. Oh, beyond this. I know. Isn't, you, this, isn't this amazing? You're writing for uh, documentaries, yeah, films, yeah, my TV brother, commercials. Yeah, my brother's a filmmaker, and so I, I get to play in that sandbox with him, and and uh, I'm I'm recording and, and I'm writing. It's it's uh, and I get to you know I get to tell people that God loves them. I just I'm, I'm getting to go places and talk about the Father's love and talk about what it looks like. Uh, to, to say, yeah, to just say, yes, I believe that you love me, and then what that looks like to, to live that way and to see him move through your, through your life, yeah. So you don't regret that big fat waiting room <laughs> that seven years? No, no, I, I don't think that you can get out of, uh, life's got disappointments, and, and there's, you know, you know I, I, I may have hurried so, into some of them, but, um, <laughs> but I just chasing his love. And, uh, no. and writing about it now. Yeah, how about that? What's yeah. the book that's coming? Almost finished. I am, I am working on something right now. I'm writing about the Father's love, becoming sure in His love. Uh, it's, um, you know, Jesus said that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So He lived as an expression of the Son on earth. He came to do two reasons. Just re reasons. He came to show us, um, w to remove the veil so we could see Father, have access to Him, and then to show us what it looks like when a son is sure in His Father's love. Mm -hmm or when a son or daughter is sure in his father's love, you know. And then he lived these, these works, and then he said greater works. He said greater works are available to us. So I'm convinced that's what I'm running for right now. I'm running after that, that lifestyle that Jesus told us we could have access to. So. I love in your book, um, what's the chapter title about brave hearts? Brave hearts. Is it just called brave hearts? Calling all brave Calling. hearts. Calling. Yeah. I like that. And we need that. Calling yeah. all brave hearts. Yeah. And the illustration is... <laughs> My wife. Your wife. Yeah, she's the biggest brave heart I know. <laughs> and you really, the focus of her heroism is her other-centeredness, her giving heart. That's right, yeah, yeah. Y you would illustrate with your children not wanting to share their cereal or something and how self-centered we are. It's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but just simply but authentically living for, for others, not yeah. just yourself. Yeah, I, well, I, I'm convinced that... Uh, l that we were created to become love. And, you know, Jesus walked the earth as love in human form. And, uh, and every need that came toward him, he met. And he didn't have to try because he was love. 
you know, I, I believe the well done we get in heaven, and it probably ties into this, the well done we get in heaven has nothing to do with what we did and everything to do with how sure we became in, in, in our Father's love. How convinced when I get to heaven and he looks at me, he's going to say, Jason, you did it. Well done. You got all of my love for you. Because if I, can, if I can believe that he loves me, then I'm transformed into his likeness. I become love. And when you know, a billionaire walks in the room, he doesn't have to try. When love walks into the room, you know, a billionaire doesn't have to try to be rich. Love doesn't have to try. And I see that in my wife. My wife is, if she's taught me, you know, yes, she gives, and it's part of just her DNA. She's good at giving. She just, she looks at people and she sees them and, and she says, okay, what do they need? What turns, what, you know, what, what lights their fire? And then she's, she gives in that way. But it's, but it's beyond that. It's, it's, even, it's even to a place, because otherwise I, I'm not capable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I, my, my wife is, uh, she's got a, a gift from heaven in that regard, just in her person. But for me, uh, and I've got some of that, but for me, I'm, I'm convinced that, that, that um, the kind of living that will, that will bring heaven to earth, that will actually change earth, is when I become sure in his love and become transformed by it, and then become love to others. This might be a tough question just in closing, but you know what it's like to have the rug pulled out from under you. Yeah and to feel devastated. Yeah. And, and, and I'm sure initially without a lot of hope, just dazed and confused. Yeah. What would you say to that person who has not experienced God, feels they haven't ever known this love? What would you say to encourage them? Well, I am, um, you know, we didn't talk about it a lot. There's been, you know, in the last seven years, there has been some, some dark seasons, some hard things, and, and, and it's in the book, but, but um, I think the biggest thing for me is I, I, I have to, you know, to know about my father. I have to be convinced that he's good. And I think, honestly, there's, there's in the church today, too. Can I tell you a story? When I was um, 10 years old, I came home. My dad was a carpenter at the time, and he, he was home after I got home from school and um, had, uh, had, had an accident, nearly severed his, his skill saw had come off, and he'd nearly severed his thumb and had gone up his arm. And, and uh, I got home and he was fine. I got into the bedroom with my, my brothers and my sister. And, and so we're watching, you know, he's telling their story, he's reliving it and the boy stuff with the blood and he's telling all how it happened. But then when it all came uh, down and the, my younger siblings stopped asking questions, I said, I, I asked the question that I think everybody's asked. Uh, it, was, it was this, Dad, why do you think God let this happen? And uh, my dad made a comment that he doesn't believe today, and neither do I, but it was, it was in the church, it was what we were being taught. He said, Dad, he said, Jason, I think God was trying to get my attention. And um, I'll tell you, my dad is an amazing man. He's, he's, he's always for me, always gives, he's always generous, he's always had my back. One time he tried to cut my thumb off with a skill saw to get my attention. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. It's a crazy idea, isn't it? Yeah. My dad, you know, the idea that our father would, would allow a skill saw and, and, uh, to, to get our attention. My dad has never done that. If he had, he wouldn't be a good father. If I told you 99 stories about my dad and how amazing he is, but one time he tried to cut my thumb off to get my attention, he wouldn't be a good father. And, that's, and I think for me, that is how you hurdle disappointment. You come to a place where you say faith is the evidence of things unseen. Even though I can't see it, I say, yes, he's always good. His love is always good, perfected in his goodness. And I, I think that that for me is, is um, how you hurdle disappointment. You become convinced that he is love and he's always good. Well, this encouragement is in this book. Yes. And I can't wait for the next one. <laughs> Jason Clark. Uh, we want to send folks to surrenderedanduntamed.com yeah, for great. the DVD, the study guide. I think guys are going to love this one. And the book, The Heart Journey, uh, also encouraging. One reviewer, uh, a senior pastor, writes, I read it, loved it, laughed with it, and cried in it. My prayer is that God would find on earth not a generation of the selfish and comfortable, the independent and domesticated, but a generation of the totally surrendered and untamed. May I be one of them. Well, I wonder if that's your heart cry as you listen to Jason today. God's waiting to hear from you. And uh, if you'd like to tell somebody or have prayer for that nudge in your heart, we would be delighted to be agreeing with you about the adventure of faith. The prayer line is on your screen. Prayer partners are available always. Jason, we can't wait for the new book and your next visit. Yeah, thank you so much. God nice bless to be here you. with you. We'll be back.